what, what as a defensive coach, what can you learn from guys out there three days in the camp? Because you're not really hitting or really doing a lot of yeah. hitting. It's really, can they, what can they take in, absorb, especially young guys, new guys? What's their learning curve? Um, you're also getting a f feel for how much you can have in, how much you can do, and expect them to play at a high level and be in the right spot. Are you pretty happy with along those lines? Yeah, Are you for the pretty most happy part. what you've been able to get in? For the most part, yeah. We've, we've got quite a bit in in just three days, um, and they've handled it fairly well. Uh, a couple of things I'm upset about right now from today, but other than that, no, we've had a, I think our ball dis disruption's been much better, getting our hands on a lot of balls and creating turnovers, punching the ball out, which is which is huge for our success. When, when you took over last fall, I know you kept it pretty simple. How much how much more can you advance the what you're able to do out there with the spring and now and the veterans that you have on this? Yeah, I, I think the, the the idea behind keeping your playbook small is, is the same. Um, now, different looks and how you change pictures and do all that, we'll, uh, we can grow there. But as far as allowing our guys to play fast, that's always going to be the first thing in our minds when we start game planning or thinking about what we're adding to the defense. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Do you feel like you've fully settled into this role now that you have so much time and a full off season under your belt, or is there still kind of some stuff you're trying to figure out and, and fine tune? I just, you know, being around a lot of good D coordinator, I don't think you ever settle in. <laughs> You know, it's constantly changing. The game's constantly changing. But am I more comfortable? Absolutely. Yeah, do I feel better about, you know, the day-to-day -day operation of things? For sure. In these drills, uh, your defense has been really stingy, mm -hmm. anything, anything down the field. Are you liking what you're seeing out of that back group? I am, yeah. Like, uh, they're, they're doing a great job as far as challenging receivers. Um, the safeties are doing a good job in rotation of defense and, and how we want to move with those guys. So I've been very happy with the back end so far, definitely. Outside of your, your dad, is there anybody else you kind of leaned on during this offseason to, you know, to kind of advance what you're trying to do and what kind of things might the person have told you? Yeah, I mean, it's I, I, my dad's obviously a big one. Um, I, I mean, Mark Banker's my next door neighbor, um, so we talk quite a bit. And then, uh, you know, just talking with Coach Smith and, and other defensive coaches around the country that I know, you know, just trying to see what they're doing, hear what they're doing, even assistant coaches, what are you doing at these places? Yeah. Is there one good real – Good piece of advice you got from anybody that you, you know you're kind of carrying into into this. Uh, yeah, the the best one was you know trust what you believe in and, and don't let anyone talk you out of doing what you what you believe in. And so that's the big, probably the best advice. Yeah. Mm -hmm. What's the biggest thing, Trent? You've gotten over the years, your whole life, from your dad when it comes to coaching defense. <laughs> the, uh, the just the detail and discipline of the detail of the assignment, and so and, and really making sure that that's constantly reinforced to our players how they're supposed to move, where their eyes are supposed to be, you know, and what their key tells them about how they're supposed to move. Those, those things that'll get you in a good or bad position right, right when the ball snapped. That's, that's probably the biggest thing. Is there any guys specifically in that secondary that's really shown out so far? It seems like Catan has really been all over the place, and Ryan Cooper yesterday as well was really, really, really uh, all over the ball. Yeah, I think those two have shown up a lot just because of their ball production and getting their hands on the ball. Um, but, you know, Alex and, and Ray have been, been great as far as not giving up deep balls and still their hands are all over receivers and, and challenging them all the time. And so you, you don't see a lot of that production because the quarterback's not going to the ball with them. So. What's your level of confidence that you guys can increase the amount of pressure you put on the quarterback? Uh, I, I feel pretty good. I think uh, the way we finished the year and then, you know, what we've seen from spring till now, just even in, you know, basic four-man rush stuff, the, the, the way we're attacking and the way our front's playing has allowed them to transition and get to the quarterback better. Yeah. yeah. It's been a while since we've seen John McCartan take the field. Yeah. What do you hope he can achieve this season? What will he add to this linebacker group? I hope he can add a lot of a lot of knowledge. Uh, he's a real sharp guy, knows knows how to not only what he's supposed to do up front and setting in the run game, but he's has a real good feel for coverage. So he's a guy that you feel you can do a lot with as far as dropping or rushing. Mm -hmm. This is the first time Omar won't play alongside Avery. Yep. What have you noticed from him this off season as he kind of steps into this leadership role? Yeah, I think uh, what you've seen from Omar is he's had to step up. He's now the veteran of the group. He's now the leader of the group. And so his his vocal you know leadership has stepped up. He's always had, he does the right things, works hard, all that, but now the vocal part stepped up. Trent, 30,000 foot view, mm -hmm. what qualities about Jonathan have kind of allowed him to kind of take the incremental steps of the program each year? And, and, and I'm sure it's more complicated than yeah. you know, one, uh -huh. one characteristic, but if you had to drill it down, like what stands out? Uh, you know, I just think he, he's, very diligent about his work, um, the way he cares for our players. I think the buy-in from our guys and 
and the belief that they have in him is, is huge. I think it always starts there. If they don't believe in you, they won't follow you. So I think, I think he did a great job when he first got here of building that trust. And we all did as a staff of building that trust with, with the guys that were there and the guys that we continue to bring in. And I, I think that's probably the biggest thing he's done is just built a there's a, there's a great culture of just trust and a great relationship rapport between coaches and players, which which has been fun to see it grow. Good seeing you. Well, Omar, tell us about the hair. Who uh, who started the trend and uh, how many guys are are taking part? Uh, originally, Coach Blue had, uh, got the DBs to dot it here on, and then. A couple of DBs was like, whole oh, defense might, might as well do it. So I was like, all right, I'm going to do mine. But it looked like I'm, it's only like about like 10 people that actually did it. So, But it's all good. How would you um, describe the approach to defense this year versus a year ago? How much different is it? Uh, I think I think it's like more aggressive. You know, like if I would say like betting on ourselves, not, not sitting back, waiting, or none of that stuff like that. Being aggressive, you know, attacking first mentality type stuff. Every, everybody talks about wanting to be more aggressive, but are, are you guys able to do that because you've been out here so long? But three, a lot of guys out have been here three and four years and know what your what your roles are to begin with. Yeah, I think it's that, and I think it's uh, a little bit tweaked in how we plan our defense and stuff like that with different techniques up front and stuff like that, and different techniques everywhere. But I think the biggest thing is uh, guys being here a long time and then just tweaking little things here and there. Jake told us earlier in the week that there's a difference between running shape and football shape. After a few days of practice, how, how are you feeling? Football shape coming back? Uh, it's starting to. You know, I, I think it's all, it's all like mental. You know, if you if you out there and you think, oh, I'm tired, then you're going to be tired. But if, you, if your mind right, I think you're going to be good. Coach Bray just told us that you've really been tasked with stepping up and, and you know, taking on more of a leadership role and whatnot. How have you kind of approached that? Uh, just... Being more in the film room, you know, meeting with him, different stuff like that, getting extra work on and off the field, you know, uh, taking, being proactive, like the day before, knowing what we install and going over it the night before, so that like once we get in the meetings, like I'm already locked in and stuff like that, so that once we get to the field and everything, it's, it's like it's cake. What is your sense in those film sessions with Trent, just in terms of your trust in him and what he's trying to impart to you schematically, et cetera? Uh, he he's a really great coach and like one of the smartest coaches that I ever met. So I trust him a lot with like anything that he's telling me. I know he's not going to steer me wrong or nothing like that. So I got full trust in him. And I, I love meeting with him just to get like just to see where I'm at and like what can I do better and stuff like that. Does Coach Bray ever sit down? Does he ever stop moving or is he constantly no. running around? <laughs> 24/7. And... <laughs> 24/7. Coach Bray moving around. What predicated the move to one? Um, I wanted I wanted to switch to a single digit. I, I, I wanted to switch to my high school number. I wore number seven in high school, but AJ had it, so I just uh, the first thing when uh, single digit I could get my hand on, I grabbed it. We've seen a lot of camaraderie between the offense and the defense. Uh, what are some things that you feel like? How does that help both sides of the ball? Uh, I think I think it helped both sides of the ball a lot because it just like. We're not afraid to go 100% against each other. Like everybody know that we out here trying to get better, and the only way we could get better is if everybody playing at a high level. So like, if everybody playing at a high level, you know, it might it might be like a little scruffles here and there, but everybody just trying to get better. It ain't nothing personal. But more after the year you guys had last year, expectations of you know taking a step. Mm -hmm. Do you guys feel that? And then how do you feel? Do you feel like you guys are ready for kind of that adjustment where expectations are for you guys now? Yeah, I I think. I think the biggest part about taking a step was the pl the players taking it in their hands, and I think that so far we're doing a pretty good job of it. Like, at, like in the summer, if you if you looked at the summer, like every position was out here getting extra work doing everything, like extra meetings and stuff like that. So I think I think we're doing a pretty good job of uh, taking it in our own hands, not just leaving it up to the coaches. Team teammates working out here this summer together. Uh, yeah, I think that you've seen it not just this summer, but all the way back in January. Um, I think guys individually, you know, no matter if they were the young guys or if they're like me, you know, last year returning, um, everybody knew that in order to take that next step, each individual was going to have to put some work in, evaluate their game, and really put in the work to take the next step, you know, individually before we can take the next step collectively. So that's been good to see all year. And putting in the time and years that you have here, what are your expectations with this group, everybody coming back? 
I mean, I think we talk about it, and I think it's loud and clear now. You know, this team, we think we're capable of winning the Pac-12 championship. So every single day, our standard, what we're working towards, is to be the caliber of defense and the caliber of team overall, offense, defense, and special teams that's capable of winning the Pac-12 championship. So that's our standard. And, um, you know, when, we're, when we aren't working towards that or we have days that, you know, we aren't going to reach those standards, then we need to hold ourselves accountable and remember what our goals are. If you guys are going to reach that goal, how much of an impact do you think your group, the secondary, will make in getting there? I mean, me being a DB, I, we always think that everything goes through us. You know, we always say they go as we go. So, I mean, us being in the back end, that's all we can control. You know, each man to man is the men in the back end. So, you know, obviously we know that that's a very important position for us, you know, especially with teams going to a lot of 11, even 10 personnel. So we know we have to take the next step. And like I said, collectively all offseason, we put in the work and, uh, you know, we embrace it and we're ready to take that step and prove it. You're going to be going against a lot of tough offenses, um, both in the preseason and in the regular season for the Pac-12. How do you deal with that kind of pressure and how do you prepare for it? Um, I don't really think it's more so pressure as it is opportunity because that's what you want. You know, you want to go against the best of the best. And so, like I said, um, you know, we're playing in the Pac-12. That's power five football. I mean, even, even the teams we play preseason are really good football teams, really good offensive, you know, football teams. So it's not like you really look at it as pressure, more so than you look at it, you know, I get the opportunity to go against the best. You know what I'm saying? We want to be the best. They want to be one of the best. So you go and you film, you study film, you know, you put the work in during the week, throughout practice. And then, you know, all those hours, all those long off season, you know, moments where you're putting in work, you know, it's all, it all adds up to those very moments in the game, you know, where you embrace the challenge and, you, you know, you get to see who's better. Have there been moments these first few days that have kind of gotten your attention? When you talk about taking the next step, you know, are, are you seeing it in, in little bursts, little moments? I mean, I'm, I'm, definitely, I'm definitely seeing it for sure. I mean, I'll talk about our room specifically. You know, I feel like I'm playing with four or five guys who are, you know, the better DBs in the Pac-12. Um, Katan Oladapo has taken a huge step in his game, huge step. Same thing, I know he's on the shelf right now, but Alton Julian, you know, Alex Austin, um, Ray John Wright, you know what I'm saying? Like, I, I genuinely feel like I'm playing with, you know, I get to share the field with you know, four or five other of some of the best Pac uh, DBs in the Pac-12. So I mean, that's one area you definitely in, in our room that I've, I've seen a jump. Coach Bray's leading the defense in training camp for the first time. What are you seeing out of him that's maybe different than you've seen in the past? I mean, the good thing about Coach Bray is that you know exactly what you're going to get with him. You know, he's, he hasn't changed from the very first day I've ever met him. He's always been the guy that has infectious energy. He's going all around the, all around the room, all around the field, wherever it may be, saying what's up to guys. Um, he's, you know, he preaches to us, be on fire for your work, and that's how he lives his life. You know, he's on fire for his work. He's on fire about the game of football. He's on fire about, you know, constantly improving every single day in order to reach those goals that we set for ourselves, which, once again, is the Pac-12 championship. So um, that's a good thing about Coach Bray is that you know what you're going to get out of him. You know, we all love him. We all respect him. You know, we all take, take his words to heart, and uh, we'd all run through a brick wall for him. What was your reaction in the summer when the two schools, USC and UCLA, decided to leave? The news came out. And what about your teammates, too? I don't really think we care. This is year seven. Yeah. If you could go back to 18-year-old Jaden, the walk-on, what do you think he would say if he could see you right now? Man, that's, that's a good question. Um, I don't think that seven years ago when I was, you know, just had turned 18, I don't even know if I would have saw myself in this position as far as, you know, being a two-time captain on, you know, on the team, all conference, whatever, you, whatever it may be. So um, I just think there's so many steps in my journey that people don't really understand. And they all know I'm here seven years, but they, they don't know that I missed the whole first three years of my career, you know, with back-to-back-to-back -to -back -to -back season and the injuries and, and a bunch of more adversity. So um, I guess I'm just thankful to be in my the situation I'm in right now and, and being here in this camp. I'm, I'm, I'm blessed to be here, and um, I feel grateful for, you know, all the adversity that I fought through that led me to this, you know, very moment. What motivates you to come back for a seventh year? You know, I'm, I, I can't remember the last time I heard of, you know, somebody staying in college for seven years and, and playing college football for seven years. What was it that, that brought you back and, and makes you as fiery, you know, now as you were a couple years ago? Well, I think everybody, um, you know, when you're evaluating whether or not you should take that next step, you know, to the, to the next level, um, everybody has their own factors. Um, so for me, it was obviously those talking to my family. But then, you know, what led me to, you know, being back in Corvallis is, you know, I, I love my teammates. I really do love my teammates, and I feel like in the last few years, we haven't lived up to our full potential. 
And so, like I was saying, all the work that we've put in throughout all the years since Coach Smith has been you know, here, all the ups and downs that we've gone through, you know, all the tight losses and the almost and, you know, making the bowl game but then losing, everything, you know, is meant to happen to lead us to this exact moment. And so, you know, we're embracing it and we're, we're really just ready for the opportunity.